Do you have the mind of Christ? Go ahead and say that with me. Do you have the mind of Christ? Amen. You know, before we go, I just want to pray again over this place, over this building. I tell you what, God has done a tremendous work. I know so far, um, I want to give God the honor and all the glory and the praise. And if you want to take scriptures, take your, get your phone out, get a picture of those scriptures. We encourage you to do that. Uh, get your phone out, maybe make notes during the sermon. We encourage you to do that. Um, but three women today gave her heart to Jesus Christ for the first time. Amen. Well, praise God for that. Man, I tell you what, you guys make my job a lot easier. I tell you, I get saved around the altar, man. And the glory to God Almighty. This is what church should be. It's body ministry. It's not a pastor leading the whole church. It's, it's the, the church itself equipping the saints and going out and being in the hands of Peter Jesus Christ and being obedient to the Spirit Almighty God. And when you're obedient, we see soul saved and lives change. Amen? Amen? So let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord. You are God and you are good. Over, situ over this whole sanctuary. God, we take authority over all the sicknesses today, the people that cannot be there that are watching right now. God, we take authority over sicknesses, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Father God. By the stripes of Jesus, God, they are healed. And we declare that right now in Jesus' name. If they're watching from their sick bed, if they're watching from the living room right now, heal them right where they're at, right now, in the name of Jesus, Father God. God, they will feel good again. They'll be able to be back in your house again. They'll be able to praise and worship your holy name. In Jesus' name I've said, and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. amen. And my wife and the kids cannot be here. Uh, they're doing okay, but with, since what happened with Connor, we were a little bit worried with him getting the flu again, so we decided to keep him home. Uh, we like to call him Cowboy Connor. So they're actually watching right now. So they're there. Everybody say Hi. They are watching. They're like, I told them, I said, you better be watching. I said, 11, 15, I'll be preaching. I'm only 30 minutes off. So, you know, it's, it's pretty good for a Jackson. All right. <laughs> but God wasn't done yet. Neither was I. Amen. <laughs> I wasn't even sure if I was going to preach today. That's okay. So last week we talked on, uh, we've been doing a series and going into 2020. And it's crazy. 2020. We're in 2020, church. Isn't that amazing? And, and we're in a new decade. Everybody say decade. Oh, glory to God. Some of you all needed a do-over. Some of you needed a mulligan. I right, was saying, God, some of you needed something to start over. And it's, it's, it's the repentance of, of our sins. But Jesus has given you another opportunity. And he's given you a new decade for a fresh start. Amen? Amen. I, mean, I don't know about you. I need a fresh start sometimes. And so with, with that said today is last week we talked on, or the first week we talked in, in January was regret. How we all have regret and remorse. Last week we talked on fear, and this week we're talking about our mind. Everybody say our mind. mind. Oh, my mind. I tell you, our mind is, can be your greatest enemy sometimes. Your mind can really hold you back from what really God wants for your life. I feel like it wasn't until I moved to northeast Maine until I really got my mind totally free from God. I, I, even though I loved Jesus, I had, my mind was very self-righteous. It was very legalistic. And it wasn't until I had to move away and God had to strip everything away from me to mind me that, you know, I had some things still hold me back. And it started with my thoughts. Thinking only God moves this way or God will only move that way. God will move any way he wants to. Amen? There is no DNA, there is no way the church should be playing as long as we're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that doesn't change. Amen. And whatever God does in between that, we're going to let him do that. Him be glorified and honored and praised. And someone give me an amen for that. You know, it's so we talked on that, those things. And in our mind and how, you know, someone doesn't start out their day on a Monday and they wake up and they tell themselves, they get beside their spouse and they say, you know, today I'm going to cheat on my wife. It doesn't happen that way, does it, church? It starts with a thought. An addict doesn't get up, and, and, and I'm not picking on my addicts. I love, I love all my addicts. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All my alcohol. We're so glad to have you. Keep coming. Keep coming. We love to have you because you're not an addict anymore. You're a child of the Most High. Amen. That might have been who you were in the world, but when you accepted Christ, now you're a child of the Most High, and you're going to walk in freedom and victory in Jesus' name. It's a year of declaring what God is doing for you. It's a year of declaring the goodness of God. But, but Nikki and Leanne, tell me if I'm wrong here. You don't wake up and just say, today I'm going to be hooked on meth. I'm, I'm not going to be hooked on heroin. It starts with being around the wrong people. 
And then you get around the wrong people, and then you start thinking, well, if it's okay for them, it'll be okay for me. Is anybody with me so far? And next thing you know, you're trapped up in all of this addiction, and all, or you're in alcohol, or you're in a, you're in a infidelity, or you're cheating at your work, or you're cheating, or you're cheating somehow, this, or you're lying, and you're caught up all of this, and you said, all it started was with a thought. See, our mind is powerful today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, this would be a scripture that we should all quote. Now, I love the New King James Version, because I think it has a little more pump behind it, all right? But it says this, casting down arguments and, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into what? Now say it like you say, bringing every thought into when? Yes. To the obedience of Christ. Someone say amen. amen. We're taking every thought, every thought, when you see a thought, you, you, you can't help what thought comes in your mind, but you can help what you do with it. And you have a choice right then. Am I going to take it captive or is it going to take me captive? You have a choice right then and there in a, in a millisecond to say, is this thought going to take me captive or am I going to take it captive? I don't know about you, church. I'm going to take the thoughts captive in Jesus' name. Amen? I'm going to let you know this will not be glory to God. This will not be a Southern Baptist sermon, all right? Just in case you were looking for one, all right? I told my wife, I said, man, that's going to be wild. I'm just feeling the Spirit of God going to roll. And I didn't know service was going to be the way it was. Awesome. And my brother-in-law, brother my father-in-law here has been a pastor for many years. You still got it, brother. You still got it, amen? <laughs> he preached for many years, many, many years in uh, Assemblies of God churches. You know, there was a story that I heard before I get into my before I get into my text, there was a young youth pastor, and he was out mowing his grass. And when he was mowing his grass, he lived on a busy highway, and someone, while they were driving the highway, threw an adult magazine out, a pornography magazine, out in the man's yard. Instead of the man closing his eyes and winding up and throwing it away, he picks the magazine up and starts looking at it. A year later, this man was arrested for molesting his daughter. To understand that our thoughts are powerful, we got to take every thought captive. Amen. Young men, man, when you're on your phone and there's an image that comes up, you close your eyes. You, whatever you got to do, turn it off. Don't look at those images. Can I get amen? amen? Ladies, girls, when gossip, you hear things about other people, don't repeat it to someone else. Can I get amen? amen. That will tear the kingdom of God apart. That's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants you to tear the kingdom of God apart. He said, man, that might be what you heard, but I'm not going to speak it out again. I'm not going to talk about this. I tell you what, gossip in this church, we're going to start doing, as I hear it, we're going to go to the altar together. You're like, oh, man, we're in gossip in the turning point. Absolutely we're not, because it breaks the kingdom of God up. And I'm not in a breaking, I'm in the building, Amen. I don't want to break something down. I want to build something up for the glory of God. I want souls to be saved and lives to be changed. Can I get amen? amen? We have to take every thought captive. Now, this is so cool. I get to piggyback off the story that I used last week. So I'm going to start in the very beginning of the story and then end at the rest of the story. Last week, we talked on the lady with the issue of, of blood and how she had 12 years and spent all the money that she had and and still, she could not get well until she saw Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Oh, man, he is the way maker. He is a great physician. Amen. And when she saw Jesus, she was well again. But before the story, before I get into that story, I'm not even going to tell it. This is this in Mark 5, 22 through 24, and they'll go down to 35. Then a leader of a local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, arrived. When he saw Jesus, he fell at his what? Never get to a point that when you feel the presence of Almighty God, don't just stand there. Get your feet before God. Raise your hands to God. Shout hallelujah to God. Amen? Amen. There should be another point in our life that we stand in the presence of God and we stand like a wooden Indian, like a security guard at a club. All right? We should be standing in reverence and humble ourselves before the Almighty God. See, this very, very um, educated man, probably very wealthy man, understood that when he got to Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him. My little girl is dying. He said, please come, lay your hands on her, heal her so she can live. Jesus went with him. And all the people, listen to this, 
followed crowding around him. So he's like, hey, come with me, Jesus. I need, you to, I need you to come with me. I need you to go pay for my dog. He says, yeah, no problem. But Jesus had many people around him. You know what it is? It's just like you. You are the light of the world. And when things are happening in your life and their life is falling all the way apart, they want to be with someone that's going to give them hope. Amen? And Jesus was right there. He was like, they're like, hey, and all of a sudden we know what happens. A woman with the issue of blood, she goes against him, hits his, hits his, uh, help me here. <laughs> hits his clothes and then he, and then she, and the bleeding stops. And, and, but, and in this time, Jesus is stopping like, hey, you know, who, who touched me? And they're like, hey, we don't know. There's too many people here. But I guarantee Jairus was like, listen, Jesus, my daughter is dying. My, my 12-year-old daughter is dying. See, if I have an 11-year-old daughter, be 12 in May, and I understand, like, my 11-year-old, soon to be 12-year-old daughter, Victoria, I'm expecting to walk her down the aisle. I want to see her have grandkids. I want to see her in ministry. I want her to marry a godly man, and they serve Jesus together. Can I get amen? It's okay. You can have it for your kids. It's good things, all right? I don't care what she does for a living as long as she's serving Jesus Christ. The rest will follow. Jesus first, career second. Amen? Amen. And, so we, and so he's probably thinking this, and we, and we know. Now go ahead and get verse 35 there. Put 35 up for Chris. It says this, while, get on my iPad here. While he was speaking to her, the messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. And they told him, your daughter is what? There's no use troubling the teacher now. Imagine his discouragement. I went to you, and someone stopped you, and because this person stopped you, my daughter is dead. See, that was an opportunity for discouragement to rise up, but that was also an opportunity for his faith to rise also. See, when you get the news that you don't expect, what news are you going to believe? And your thoughts are going to tell you it's all over now. It's, all, it's never over. Our God is great, amen. I'll tell you the story. When Connor was not responding to us down in the, on, going 95 miles an hour on I-65, I knew two things because God told me he was going to be a pastor. I knew A, God was going to heal him in the car, or B, God was going to raise him from the dead. I had no doubt in my mind that's the way it was going to be. Because my God told me he will be a pastor. So God is good to his word. He won't fail me yet. So you have an opportunity in your life when something you hear news that you didn't want to hear. What are you going to believe? I don't know about you. I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. That my God is for me. He's not against me. But Jesus overheard. Everybody go, romp, romp. <laughs> that was awful. Let's try it again. Rah, rah. <laughs> Jesus overheard. Like, oh, man. Je I love it. Jesus overheard. And, and this is what he said. To them, he said to them, Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have some of you today. The enemy would chip you up with the smallest little thing. And, and God showed me today, do not be afraid. Just have faith. Don't, don't be afraid that I am who I am, and faith is a cornerstone of your walk with me. Faith without works is dead. You've got to have some faith sometimes. Just because it's not what you see doesn't mean that God's not still working it out. Amen. Thank you for your shout, Dwayne. I know like, something of Dwayne's getting over here. Then the crowd stopped. The, the, then Jesus stopped the crowd and wouldn't let anyone go except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. And when they came to the house of the synagogue leader, Jesus saw much commotion and weeping and wailing. He went inside and asked, why all this commotion and weeping? The child isn't dead. She's only asleep. Glory to God. I pray that you can look out of the natural and look into the supernatural and look at what God's about to do. See, Jesus was, they were looking at the natural, but our Jesus was looking in the supernatural. 
You look at your people you've been knowing all these time. They're just this or this, that, or this, that. That's who they are now. But when they ever get a hold of the power of Almighty God and repent of their sin, they'll be a child of the Most High. That's not who they are right now. I can see who they can be. Glory to God. But it's all about us taking authority over our mind. Taking the power that Christ has given us. Now, look, we got, we got, got some, as we out, me and Don, I call, me, I call them haters. Everybody say haters. Haters. I know I'm old. Nikki, we're about the same, close to the same age. We got some haters. And the crowd laughed. I get laughed all the time. Pastor John, you're, you're crazy. I'm crazy for Jesus. I don't care about man's approval. I just care about my king of king, the Lord of lords. He's the only one I care about. Crowd laughed at him, but he, he made them all leave. I love it. She ain't laughing. He says, you gots to go. All right? I know that's not per perfect English, but they said, you gots to go right now. You've got to leave this area right now. I don't need anybody that's going to doubt what I'm about to do, what my heavenly father is about to do. See, are you around people today that's building you up? Or are you around people that's going to break you down? Are you got people that's doubting the power of Almighty God? Just because they don't see it doesn't mean you need to doubt it. Oh, I feel like preaching today. Oh, glory to God. Woo, I didn't have these in my notes. I'm just excited, all right? Glory to God. Lizanne, you're missing out. All right. But you know, today, there's some people in your life are saying, even, even believers would say, oh, you know, it's, it's just the way it's going to be. Absolutely not. That's a lie from the pit of hell. It's a lie from the pit of hell. My God is bigger than that. My God is stronger than that. If God is for us, who can be against us? You got a big decision to make. Every demonic thought saying it's not going to work. People around you are saying you need to go back where it's comfortable. But you just do what God has told you to do. And he will take care of the rest. Doesn't matter what they say. He will take care of the rest. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Like to prophesy and preach at the same time. Is that right, y'all? <laughs> Amen. We just do whatever God tells us to do. Then he made them all leave, and he took the girls and the father and the mother. Now, check this out. How many disciples? They took the three disciples into the room where the girl was lying. He didn't take 12 disciples, he only took three. And he only took mom and dad. We're going to go somewhere here in a second. Holding her hand, and I'm not going to butcher this, but I have Jim say this for me everywhere. But it says this. Little girl, get up. Everybody say, get up. get up. And the girl who was 12 years old immediately stood up and walked around. Glory to God. Come on, church. Glory to God Almighty. That might have been 2,000 years ago, but it's still raveling today. Amen. Some of you need spiritually need to wake up. Some of you spiritually are staying there laying like this little 12-year-old girl. And some of God's saying right now, my spirit lives inside of you. You need to rise up and be what I've called you to be. Take authority over your mind and say, I'm a child of the Most High, and I will not be defeated anymore. 2020 is a new decade. 2020 is a new generation. 2020, God's going to do the greatest work he's ever done in my life. And all hell can't stop me anymore. Every demonic thought won't stop me anymore. I'm going to have a mind of Christ. Stability in Jesus' name. Clarity in Jesus' name. Peace in Jesus' name. Anointing in Jesus' name. Wisdom in Jesus' name. Glory to God. She stood up and they were amazed. We should not be amazed. We should not be amazed when God answers our prayers. We should not be amazed that people in wheelchairs are getting up and walking. That's the generation. That's the way we're heading in Jesus' name. Like, what are you talking crazy? No, I'm talking the word of God. We should not be amazed when you have a situation that's totally far away from the Lord and that person turns their heart around and gives their life to Jesus and they start being kind to you again. We should not be amazed. That's the God that we serve. That's the God that we serve. Let's finish this up. But Jesus gave them strict orders not to tell anyone what happened. And then he told them to give her something 
to eat. The world today is looking for a hope, and hope's name is. But we have, as church, as moving in 2020, we have to have authority, and we have to have the freedom now. You have to take authority over every thought. I noticed uh, this from pastor for almost a year and a half now that we are seeing people that are still defeated from 30 years ago or 40 years ago or 50 years ago, and that's not who you are. The Bible tells us that when you accept Christ, the old things shall pass away, and all things shall become what? New. You're new in Christ Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ was shed for your sins, that you shall be free in Jesus. And not just free, free indeed. Hallelujah. So we asked the question today, do we have the mind of Christ in in Philippians 2 tells us this in, in verse 5, it says, Let this mind be with, with you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Question I have, go put that question up there, Chris, if you can. How do we receive the mind of Christ? How many want to receive the mind of Christ? Come on, I said, how many want to receive the mind of Christ? I don't know about you, I'm, I'm tired of getting beat up. I'm tired of, of believing lies from the enemy. You know, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. Well, what would the mind of Christ, what, what does Jesus' mind look like? And I'm going to go through these seven points very fast, and we'll go back to that question again. How do we, what did Jesus' mind look like? Number one, he had a holy mind. Everybody say holy. Holiness, man. It's not, not, not as the way you dress. It's not the way that you, what you do or do not do. I've seen so many people that are bound up on legalism by the way that they dress, and they still don't have the character of Christ. So holiness is a, your thought pattern and what you do with Christ and what Christ does for you. Jesus' mind was holy, man. When, it, when a, you know, the thoughts of, he didn't have the thoughts that we would have. He was holy. Number two, he has no judgment. You know, sometimes I'm my worst enemy. I will look at the situation, and I won't ever say, but in my mind, say, oh, they're this, they're this way because of this. Absolutely not. He had no judgment on people. He also had compassion. His mind was full of compassion. His heart was full of compassion. His mind and his heart was full of love and grace. How many grace today? And number six, you know, he was full of forgiveness. And number seven, he was full of freedom freedom. He would do whatever his heavenly father told him to do. So we're going to ask the question again. Go ahead and put it back up for Chris. How do we receive the mind of Christ? Number one today, everybody say ask. You don't know what to ask, you know. I, I've learned that when I was buying a house. So you say, just ask him. Worst case thing they can say is no, you know. When you're buying a car, you just ask him. Worst thing they can say is no, but our heavenly father said ask, and he's not going to tell you no, amen. In John 14, 13 and 14, he says this, and whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the father may be glorified in the son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. God, let my mind and my actions and my emotions line up to the obedience of Christ. We, we, got, we got Christians that are here and here. See what I'm talking about? We're serving Jesus one moment, and then we're doing this the other moment. We need some, some stability in Christianity. Amen? We're not going to lead people to Christ if we're here and here. We need to be stability in Jesus. Name. There's stability in your mind and your thinking. Ask, God, I want to have a mind like you. I want to have, a, have wisdom like you. Ask, God, I'll have peace like you. God, I ask, I have clarity like you. Nothing can trump the peace of God and the, and the clarity of God. Number two today, how do we receive the mind of Christ? Number two is we take every thought captive. We talked about that a few minutes ago. Taking every thought captive. Just because I just love the scripture so much, I'm going to read it again. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, casting down every argument, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You say, I will not go down this road again. I will not allow my thought, my mind to take me places I shouldn't go. You know, I'm seeing in church a lot, and not just here, but I'm seeing that people are getting offended with each other when someone's not even saying anything to them. 
Like, what? You know, you, you walk by someone and, they, and you say hi to them, maybe they didn't hear you. And you're like, that person just doesn't like me anymore. Or you'll be at your job and you'll say, you'll say hi to your coworker and maybe they didn't hear you. And all of a sudden you have in your mind a scenario in your mind you're thinking about this. Is, anybody, is it just me? I mean, is that what I'm talking about? Like, oh, yeah. Psh, next time I see them, I'm going to tell them. And maybe they didn't hear you. And I'm going to tell you something. If you say hi to me, I don't hear you. I really can't hear you. I'm horrible hearing. All right? So, but listen, I mean, sometimes the enemy plays minds. He plays chaps in your mind. And when he does that, you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to think that. In your name, there is healing. In your name, there is forgiveness. And in the name of Jesus, I will not go down this road anymore. You're not going to go rapid in my mind. You're not going to put offenses in my mind and bitterness in my mind. One of the worst demonic things you could ever bring on yourself is bitterness. It's demonic because it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. It's like a cancer. I don't know about you. I don't want any of that. Amen. I want the fruit of the Spirit. Take every thought captive. Number three today. This is so powerful. Declare your freedom. Everybody say, declare your freedom. Declare your freedom. Who the Son says free is free indeed. I will be free in Jesus' name. This won't always be me. I will be free from this day forward in Jesus' name. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 13, it tells us, For we have been called to live in freedom. Everybody say that word again. My uh, brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. We have been called to live in freedom. Man, that we will walk in freedom, that we will not be tormented anymore. That, that you're just, your, your greatest moments, which is when you just gave your heart to Christ, your greatest moments every day that you wake up and you're walking with Christ and you take authority over everything. Remember what Jesus said? He said, I've given you authority on heaven and what? You're like, man, what does that mean, Pastor John? What that means today is whatever comes your way, you take authority in Jesus' name. We, we as the situation's going on here, I think it was Will. I said, man, I'm done with this. As your friend, as your pastor, we take authority over this right now in Jesus' name. It's done in Jesus' name. When I was in Maine, I pastor, Pastor Jim, who was 77 years old at the time, he had, a, he had a grandson. Something happened when they were in Florida on a vacation. He got real sick. It didn't, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. They just barely got him, they got him home. He was getting worse. He was, in the, he was in the hospital. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Pastor Jim says, enough of this. I'm taking authority in Jesus' name. He walks, he walks to where his grandson was at and said, the name of Jesus, by the stripes he is healed, and you will not have my grandson anymore in Jesus' name. That boy came out of the hospital was dancing for the Lord that Sunday. That's the power of God. It's the authority of God. It's the authority that God has given you. Some of us men today, we, as, as husbands today, as fathers today, we have to take the authority in our household. We had to say, you know what? No foul spirit in this house in Jesus' name. My children will live for you all the days of their life. They will love you all the days of their life. The fruit of the Spirit will, will roll in them in Jesus' name. You've taken the authority in Jesus' mighty name. Declaring your freedom. You know, it's, it's, you, know you have to have faith to believe that God will do it. It's first, but second is declaring. There's more, this is so much powerful. As even when you're going through a situation, you're not seeing it the way it is, you declare every time, in Jesus' name, it will not always be this way. Damon caught me the other day. I was driving by his house. And he says, what are you, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm picking my kids up from my in-laws. I said, but I always go this way to pray over your house. I said, I declare freedom in Jesus' name over your home and over your children. And no sickness will come in your house in Jesus' name. He said, man, thanks. I'm going to feed my dogs. <laughs> because I understand I mean, we all need a little prayer. Take authority. As his pastor, as his friend, I'm declaring that. Find out where y'all live. I'll start driving around. You see an old beat up Chevy truck. It's going slow, raising my hand. I'm just declaring healing. That's about to go on Collins Road out there where you all live at. Say, no sickness in Jesus' name. Because I know we have the authority through Christ. I declare it in Jesus' name. Come on up here if you can. I'm going to end something a little bit differently. I told this story before, 
but I wasn't going to tell it today, but I believe I need to. When I was living in a different home, and I had someone in my house, in my neighborhood where I lived at, they had a suicidal spirit. And uh, I was talking to their father who lived down the street from me. And I know some of you have heard this story before, and I apologize, but I feel like it's relevant to today. And this lady tried to kill herself three different times. And I was letting my chickens in the barn. You know, that's how we right next to it out here. All right, and I was putting the chickens in the barn, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, you declare, she was a field away, declare freedom in her mind. There was such a darkness when I drove by her house. So I'd stretch my hands out every night. Can you stand up with me, please? I'm sorry. I would stretch my hands out, and I would say, in the name of Jesus, she shall live and not die in Jesus' name. I cancel the assignment of death right now in her life. I cancel death in her life right now. I would pray, God, that she will come to know you in Jesus' name. Two times she's already killed herself. This time she had got a brand new wheelchair. She charged it up, full battery, and she was going to drown herself in a pond behind her house. She worked it out. She knew her parents would be away, but then she could do it. All day she thought of, tonight when mom and dad are gone, because they live next door, I'm going to kill myself and be gone with all this pain, which is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen? Eternity is, is hell not knowing Jesus. And I was that night, I felt so compelled. I was praying, I was declaring, I was running around the yard, I looked like a crazy man. It was really cold like it is right now. And the next day, his dad pulls in there on his four-wheeler, and he said, John, she went to kill herself. Now I have to show you where Brett and Becky are the pond. But she got to here, and it wouldn't go any further to the water. She said, she can't kill herself even if she wanted to. And I said, glory to God Almighty. I declare freedom in Jesus' name. And this young lady, I believe, made things right with the Lord. She did die of a heart problem, but she didn't kill herself. She made things right with God Almighty. I'm telling you today to tell you this, declare your freedom, not just for you, but for your friends and for your neighbors in Jesus' name. We had a little church service out in Little York when I heard that. Glory to God. Because I'm telling you today, I can't think of anyone dying and going to hell. It's forever. Forever. Hell is forever. And it was never made for, for anyone but the fallen angels. It wasn't made for us. All he wants is a relationship with you. So I, that said, I feel the anointing of God as we're singing this today. I'm, the first altar call is this. If you need to make things right with Jesus again, maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe your heart's not beating for Jesus like it should. I'm going to ask you to come forward right now, wherever you're at, to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ. And, and then the second also call today is this. Let's be free in Jesus' name. I'm asking for everyone to come forward today and say, I'm going to be free in Christ. 2020 will be a new year. 2020 will be a new decade. 2020, I will walk in freedom in Jesus' name. And the enemy has no right. And I, I kick him out of my head. I kick him out of my property.